We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. Well, I had just come home from church, and then we kept hearing, you know, Pearl Harbor was bombed, Pearl Harbor was bombed. I had no idea where Pearl Harbor was. My geography was not that sophisticated. I had no idea, and my father said, oh, oh there's going to be trouble. And I said, well, how come, you know? He says, well, Japan just bombed Pearl Harbor. And he says, we're at war with Japan. But I thought, why should it bother me? On December 7th, 1941, Japan attacked U.S. military bases in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Fear was brewing that the West Coast would be attacked next. In the midst of this hysteria, some confused Japanese Americans with the enemy, like Akiko Kurose, who was a high school student at the time. Then when I went back to school that following morning, you know, December 8th, one of the teachers said, you people bomb Pearl Harbor. And I'm going, my people, you know. All of a sudden, my Japanese-ness became very aware to me, you know, and then that I no longer felt I'm an equal American, that I felt kind of threatened and nervous about it. In the weeks following, Japan won numerous battles in Asia. Newspapers were filled with these reports, along with sensational rumors about Japanese Americans spying and sabotaging military bases. Even Dr. Seuss, the famed children's book author, who was generally liberal in his views, penned political cartoons that cast suspicion against Japanese Americans on the West Coast. <laughs> Our West Coast became a potential combat zone. The atmosphere for those of Japanese ancestry was uncomfortable and hostile, and many feared the possibility of hate crimes against them. We lived in mortal fear. We laid out our plans should they come and attack, and we had nobody to help protect us. We would run in a certain direction through the cattle field, which was nearby and we would hide behind these old wooden fences that were, from my bird's eye view, was about eight to 10 feet high, you know? And we knew where we were all gonna hide and try to defend ourselves. The kids played together uh, just during the day, but when sundown came along, of course, we were all huddled inside the house, waiting for somebody maybe to attack us. And I recall crying oftentimes, you know, it was just a frightening experience. Influenced by intense political pressure from West Coast politicians, farmers, and labor unions, the president signed Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942, 10 weeks after the Pearl Harbor attack. That is why the commanding general of the Western Defense Command determined that all Japanese within the coastal area should move inland. As a result, the U.S. military removed and incarcerated over 110,000 Japanese Americans from Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, and Arizona. Ironically, in Hawaii, where the attack occurred, only a handful of the 160,000 Japanese Americans were locked up, while the majority stayed to help with the war effort. By the end of March 1942, the Army started forcing out Japanese American families from their homes and communities. Kara Kondo left her home in Wapato, Washington. As we pulled out, I can remember my father holding on to the arm of his hard seat, 
the blinds had been withdrawn, but you could, before they did that, you could see the shadow of the Mount Adams and the sun behind it. And, <clears throat> and looking at his face, I could just uh, feel that he was saying goodbye to the place that he had known so well. Uh, pictures like that, just really, when you think about it, very, very sad, but it was, it was such a, uh, it's hard to explain the kind of feeling, the atmosphere of that time. Stayed until the last person got in the into the compound and heard the gate clang behind me. And I think when people ask what my memory was uh, about the evacuation, I think I'll always remember the sound of the gate clanging behind yeah, you.